guys. Here we go. Check this out. This is Whole Nother Level with Dwayne Lindo. You know, frankly, I, I, I feel that we shouldn't even be talking about this. Simple as that. The great L. Bushman. They'd have to make so many adjustments, but I don't know what they have to do. They need a man. Frank Mize. Did they win the offseason in free agency? Yes. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Craig Cousin. How can you not put Tom Brady number one on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks? Man, this guy's a legend. Ring speak. And Eric Wilson. I didn't know Eric was going to let you talk. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I've seen enough Facebook <laughs> posts to know that you're not a Giants fan. <laughs> Let's go. And welcome everyone to week three here in the NFL live at Old School 1991, beautiful downtown Sarasota. We are HNL3. I am joined by the entire cast of characters, the great L. Bushman, our man, Dr. CC, Craig Cousin. Dwayne Lindo, and of course the factual Frank Mazzei. Gentlemen, good morning. What's going on? How are you? I'd like to be watching this game, but unfortunately it's streaming on Yahoo instead of on national networks. That makes a lot of sense, but other than that, pretty good. First of all, you're calling this a game is a travesty. Not for me. It's not. j in the house. They showed up. Ridiculous. Uh, yeah, why all of you gentlemen picked the Baltimore Ravens to win this game. Usually me being the lone wolf here in the group, I took the Jacksonville Jaguars, so I just want to say thank you to the four of you because now we can start these Sunday games. one up on, on us? Well, no. Actually, now it, we would be even because – Is the game over yet? No. It's over. Pretty much. Yes, it's over. But we're starting even even because all of you gentlemen took the St. Louis L.A. Rams. Yes. On Thursday night while I Don't took worry, the 49ers. Don't worry, I made that mistake last week. It's hard to hard transition there. It is. It really is. I, I will get better. But So we're kind of starting to – we're kind of starting even off. But shout out to um, Mr. Dwayne Lindo. First week of us doing our pick he was the man. The least number of losses, so congratulations. Even a blind squirrel. We didn't tie? Wow, wow. Even a you blind this, You hear this guy? I thought we you were. Wait, 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 wait. You hear this guy? I heard okay. Wait, okay. hold on, hold on. I'll let this season run out, and we'll, I, see how, we'll see how that works. I thought, I, we were, I thought me and okay. him were tied going into Thursday. No, the Monday night game. Oh. The Monday night game. That's right. what happened. Craig, I was going to say the sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while. <laughs> so that, 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 that was pretty I much I like yours a little that, bit better. That, 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 I was that, trying that was to be my PG for the people, you but know? I, I got to give it out to Eric, though. I mean, picking the London Jaguars was a great pick. Listen. No, they're no has, longer the, the Jaguars. They're the Bobbies. History has shown. Fantastic, man. Give it up for Shad Khan. That in the house. Jacksonville plays well in London. That's why I took them. I was like, well, they play well in London, so what the hell? Well, before, before uh, flying over the pond, the London Jaguars put a new mo- uh, motor in the Mercedes. So I think that was the, the key factor. The Mercedes. Flying over I the like pond? There. You're doing there analogies you now. Wow. You, wow. you, you wow. really Lando's said flying today. over the pond. He did. <laughs> flying. Okay. He did. Right. Lindo so, com- coming off a good week, and, and look at him. Still flying high. <laughs> so as it stands right now, Jacksonville is up. 37 to nothing. That's ridiculous. That game's over. Over Baltimore. So, yes, Frank, that game is over. <laughs> Joe Flacco, 11 passing yards. He's, he's just basically giving the ball away. He's negative, in, he's negative in fantasy points. And on the flip yes, side, negative. the one guy who we all figured was good for at least two to three interceptions, Blake Bortles, four touchdown passes? Doesn't four? make any sense. I mean, come on. Against a good defense yes. at that. Well, not today. Yeah, no. clearly. Speaking of that, let's get to these today's games. And so let's start with. I blame the flying. Another team that flying. isn't doing so well. We will see how they fare today, and that is the Cleveland Browns going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Browns lost 24-10 to last week against yet a second divisional opponent in the Ravens, who are currently getting shut out. They've lost 14 straight on the road. Today, do they get their first win against an Indianapolis defense? Well, somebody's going to win today. <laughs> well, I agree. So I, I'm just asking, do we give Cleveland the edge? Even though Cleveland is going to Indianapolis, Indianapolis has Jacoby Brissett. They still have that's it. An aging Frank that's Gore. It. That's it. T.Y. Hilton, Moncrief, T.Y. Hilton, Frank Gore. I mean, Moncrief. come on, you're, Frank. You're, you're putting your hopes on Frank Gore. I'm not putting my hopes really on anybody. Frank, I'm just actually, asking. I am. He's my flex on my fantasy team, so he has to go in for at least one touchdown. I mean, one. 
We won. won. We're, 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 were, were you in person for the draft? or It was a late round pick. Okay. All right. it was a late I'm, round. I'm, I'm, a little auto I'm, draft I'm, action. Yeah. Look, I, I, I'm just available. checking. I mean, look, the Colts are going to start a rookie center today, which that's not good. They need better production. Here's If you're a Colts fan, the only thing that you have to look forward to is the team Christmas party this year. That's basically it. You're not going to the playoffs. You're probably not going to win. You went 8-8 eight and eight the last two years. That ain't going to happen. But what it, does what, – what, Look, the Browns are just uh, equally as worse. I mean, they have no one offensively, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, at least T.Y. Hilton, Jacoby Brissett, and T.Y. Hilton may match up maybe for a touchdown if they're lucky. You know, you have the aging Frank Gore that is running all over the place, but – the Browns have nothing going on. Absolutely. Listen, absolutely normally, normally no, I would say this is a terrible game. But judging by the terrible game that wasn't on Thursday night, I think about anything's possible. Well, so who wait, knows? This might be the, the best the game line. of the day. Hey, you have you seen the line for this game? No, hey, I have, have you What's seen the line? the line for this game? What is it? Cleveland was favored by one and a half. That, that should tell you everything you need to know about the Colts oh, and yeah. everything. Right. Well, Cleveland yeah. But listen, you I'm, talk about not having anything, Dwayne. Kaiser's completed 48% of his throws for 148 last is week. Is that before he's had Advil for his headaches? And he is tied with both Carson Palmer and Andy Dalton, though, on the inception with four interceptions for the year. But this guy is still producing. He's a rookie. Why do we give other rookies an opportunity to give them a pass, but we're not giving it to Cleveland's quarterback when this guy is actually looking like he might – evolve into something well look i mean it's going to take a while for kaiser to mature uh obviously we've seen some bright spots with him but again you could tell that he's still trying to learn still making these uh rookie mistakes but it's going to take some time and the browns clearly clearly don't have it uh they haven't had it the, fa- the first couple games of the season they won't have it this game uh okay so the, then- the browns are favored by one point one and a half points but so what do we expect from Rashad Higgins, who was 7 for 95 last week? What do we expect from him today? I think he's going to get a lot of targets. I think he's going to do well in fantasy. I have the Browns winning this game, actually. I think for both of these teams, this is a must-win game, clearly. Like, if you can't beat the opposition in this game, you might not win a game this season. Outside I, the Jets, these are probably the two worst teams well, I'm, in the I'm with you. I have the Browns winning as well. I mean, look, everybody knows. I mean, it's no secret that Chuck Pagano is going to be gone. That job is going to be Jim Harbaugh's or David Shaw's Jim next Harbaugh's year. Jim Harbaugh's going to be taken, yeah. Get, get somebody. I, sorry, Steve. Sorry. You, you need to get somebody in there. And I can't blame the new GM. I'll put most of this on Grigson, who has no clue what he's doing. I don't know what he was doing during the last few years of the NFL draft, playing solitaire or watching porn probably but I'm, I'm just saying he, they didn't address anything you have to you have to protect your quarterback when you got one like Andrew Luck I mean come on you haven't built the defense what, what do they have you have no offensive line you have no defense you had receivers I mean you dropped a Philip Dorsett in the first round two years ago and then you just trade him away for a third string quarterback that's okay. starting for you right now. It, that's all it, you need to know I, about the Indianapolis Colts. I don't blame Pagano for this because, I mean, look. This oh, he's trying years, to do something for the team. He went 11-5. and five. He can at least coach. But if you look at the talent on that roster, nobody's winning there. No. Okay. But Jacoby Brissett, this guy was 20-37 of 37 for 216 last week. Now, he also has a guy who he's kind of familiar with, running back Matt Days. They both went to NC State together. So can the two of them – for Indianapolis, can the two of them kind of maybe get some of that chemistry back together again today against a team who we've always considered to be the bottom of the barrel in the Cleveland Browns? Because no. I've got, what, three guys up here saying the Browns are going to win Great Bushman? Oh, you're fourth right here, Browns. Well, no, no, I, no, 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 I, no, I, no, I didn't say you. you. I knew, of course. I, I mean, knew I, Frank. I knew yes. Craig. I, I, Evan, I, you're saying the Browns I are going to win? I the Browns because the Browns at least have a, a smidgen more talent than the Colts do. I mean, they've, they've, got, they've got Duke they, Johnson Think Jr. about that statement. I, it's a smidge, and, 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 that's, the, and saying, that's the think, thing. Think it's a smidge. That's where the Colts are now. And, it's okay. a, and I, I look at it this way because the Colts have no offensive line whatsoever. The, the Browns at least kind of have a decent defense where they can get to Brissett. And they All have right. a good offensive line, too, the Cleveland yeah. All right, so I got Joe three Thomas gentlemen up a, here. Is a, saying, he's a pro bowler. I got you'll, three, you'll, three gentlemen saying the Browns are winning. You'll see a lot of Duke Johnson Jr. today. For, uh, Dwayne. You're Indy? saying Indy's going to win this game. Well, hey, look, I mean, Indy's at home. I, and that's the reason why I'm giving them the edge at this point, because they're at home. So, I mean, Even they're though both they're equally... the underdog at home, you are still giving Indy, with Jacoby Brissett, T.Y. Hilton, and aging Frank Gore, this new running back, Matt Days, you're giving all of that is your reason, but you're forgetting about that Indy defense, which we don't even really speak about well, the, uh, because there isn't one. Well, that's, that's the whole point. I mean, but look, I mean, Browns I know have a, a – 
kind of a great defense. Not a great defense, but kind of a good defense. But look, I, I'm going to have to go with Indy on this one. I can't, I, I'm just going to have to. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but solely because I've seen what Jacoby Brissett could do when he played for New England, I'm going with the Colts on this yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a three-point game either way. So I, you know, I'm either team should push the panic button if they lose this. Yeah, but me and Dwayne don't usually agree on stuff. So I was like, all right, I got Indy as well. So you're we're trying, three you're to just two. trying to roll with him because he was well, first on picks last week. No, I know how you roll. Eric. No, uh, my picks are already done, and I, I unlike Scribbles, I oh, will I thought not you were change actually, them. Thought you were looking but, at the old school menu trying to order something the whole time. No, I, but, I got no. Hey, Craig, you know you just better recognize, man. Just if you need the sheet oh. after we're done here, just, oh, you need a pen to pencil scribble it out. Just holler. Look, here's all my picks. I already made all my picks. I am not scribbling. I'm not changing. Whoever I pick, that's who I'm going with. Both these teams are going to finish last in their divisions. Oh, of course they yeah, are. Yeah. Wait, why are we still on this game? We're moving on. <laughs> We're moving on to Jay Cutler and the Dolphins heading to play an AFC East division rival in the Jets. So, I mean, the Dolphins beat out the Chargers barely last week, which was game one for them, for the Dolphins, 1917. They were 5-1 in their last six road games. Meanwhile, the Jets, I still think that Marshawn Lynch is still on the sideline dancing from the beatdown that the Jets were handed by the Oakland Raiders last week. So here's an interesting stat. In 2015, the Jets swept Miami. In 2016, Miami swept the Jets. So, gentlemen, who this year is going to be the victor, or are they going to split the season, do you think? Fins. Okay. You're saying Miami is going Fins to win both games. Jay Cutler looked at least decent last week against the Chargers. Jay Ajay has kind of picked up from where he was last year. I, I think Fins all the way. The Jets are a dumpster fire. Are we all this. They're they're in the bottom of the barrel just like the uh, the Browns and the Colts are. Yeah, Jay Cutler already has some chemistry with Jarvis Landry. 14 receptions last week. Devontae Parker is going to have a big season under se- if he can stay healthy. That's the biggest concern with him. But I like the way the offense is moving and going. And you're going against a division rival, yes. But it, it's a division rival that's really struggling to get anything done. Craig, you in, can also on defense or on offense. Craig, you can also say this i think a color also picked up the pieces from where he was in chicago with adam gaze coming into the miami i think it was a perfect marriage to get those two back together on the on the fence so fins all the way speaking of jarvis landry you know he caught career high 13 catches last week in my opinion this guy emerged as pretty much alongside curse but i would say jarvis landry is probably going to be the primary weapon for the jets how much do for you the guys? Jets. I mean, I'm sorry the for the Dolphins. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I mean, they could use Jarvis Landry on the <laughs> yes, Jets. They could. No, I, I, I meant for the Dolphins. So, do we see more of that today between Cutler and Landry against the Jets? I mean, you probably. I'm sorry. You probably do. I mean, but here's the thing that I'm looking at. I don't see the Dolphins winning two road two road games in as many weeks. So you're going picking with the, the Jets. You're picking, the, picking Jets the Jets. Today? I mean, you, you we have a divisional and game this, here. And Ladies this is the guy that won last week's picks. Will lose this look, week. And what? he's back to the old Dwayne Lindo. This is vodka. Well, here, here's the thing, well, though. Yeah, this is vodka. Do you, do you, do you really, do you this really trust? This is vodka. Ladies and do gentlemen, do you really trust the Dolphins? HNL3 is proudly sponsored by. Yes. Do you really, yes. you really like trust the Jets? This is yes. Vodka. Yes. Yes. You're talking about a divisional game here. Yes. I mean, okay, all right. Wow. Fire, Fireman Ed already put on a Dolphins jersey. I mean, look, today, I understand. So. I understand. There's. Uh, it looks like the Dolphins have a little bit of promise with uh, with your boy from Chicago. I mean, of all. Of all quarterbacks. But we know Jay Cutler to have an arm. We know Jay Cutler that when he wants to play, he can play. And with Adam Gase now as his head coach, we know what Jay Cutler did you, can Did you do. see how happy he was that yeah, last game? Right. He, and he doesn't smile. He mostly looks like a sad dog each and every week. So I, he was smiled. There you go. He's happy in Miami. Well, $10 million helps. I mean, it yes. makes me smile. I mean, look, this game, I mean, this is a simple formula. The Jets' defense cannot stop the run. So, hello, if you're picking fantasy today. Oh, Tariq Cohen all day. Ajayi. They're going to oh, run, the run the ball. They're going to run the ball all day They are going Sorry, to yeah. run the ball. Run the ball right down. Getting rid of Sheldon Richardson. The Jets' D-line is not what it is. I mean, I feel bad for Todd Bowles. I mean, I really do because I don't blame this on him. But they have absolutely nothing. And Miami can rush the passer. I mean, Cameron Wake, I mean, their defense, it's legitimate. This this game shouldn't even be close. There's going to be more Dolphins fans in that stadium today than Jets fans. All right. Eric, yeah. you okay? You keep I putting players on other play, on other teams. I, Are you it's all right? fantasy purposes. You oh, know, okay. I'm trying to think who I'm going to like go on I the guess. waiver wire and try to get. But anyhow. All right. So, Great L. Bushman, you got the fins. Craig, the fins. who do you got? Fins. You've got Jets, the Jets. Jets. I'm with Kathy today, baby. Frank, I, Kathy's I don't, not even with the Jets. I don't even think <laughs> Kathy's with them. She's not even with the Jets. Is Kathy listening? Yes. I like the Jets, Kathy, but I don't think I'm the Dolphins. <laughs> no, she already told me. She's like, by week five, and this is what she said, if the Jets can't beat the Browns, 
she's officially disowning the Jets, and I get to buy her an Eagles jersey. So you're, you're missing Geno Smith now, aren't you? I ain't missing nobody. <laughs> Yeah, all day I got the fins on this game. So, all right, let's keep it going. Um, let's talk about a team who I want to say, first and foremost, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for crushing Dallas last week, and that is the Denver Broncos. They just annihilated the Cowboys. Couldn't happen to a nicer team, in my opinion. Not only that, but they held Ezekiel Elliott to nine yards. Eight. Yeah, Tom Brady had nine. Eight oh, yards for Zeke. Eight yards for Tom Zeke. Brady had more yards than Ezekiel Elliott? Yes. Wow. That's, there's a moment of Zeke silence Zeke is now the that. new Jordan crying meme. Oh, my God. The way he was sitting on the bench like this. C.J. Anderson. Where did he show up from? This guy. The, resurgent, the resurgence touchdowns. of C.J. Anderson. Yeah, had three rushing touchdowns. He's been there. I know, but we haven't heard much from him. So what do we expect from him today against Buffalo and C.J. Anderson? I think Denver keeps it rolling. I mean, I really like what Trevor Simeon's doing. I know they're going on the road in Buffalo, but I like this Denver defense to really put pressure on Tyrod Taylor. Not a lot of weapons on offense for Buffalo outside of LaShawn McCoy. I think they're going to uh, bobble him up. I really like Denver to keep it rolling again with, you know, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, and C.J. is going to keep running until he gets injured because he is going to get injured, but he's going to keep running. I, until I also have the Broncos in this game. Simeon looks so comfortable in that pocket. He's actually looking like, you know, a mid, a second tier, almost a top tier guy when it comes to being you know, a quarterback. You know, he leads the league in touchdown he, passes he right does, now. Trevor so Simeon does. That's a, unreal. A guy that, you know, we there was a quarterback controversy throughout the summer, won the job, has now impressed me throughout the season so far in week three. And it's only Craig, week three, though. It doesn't matter. He looks so comfortable in that pocket with that offense and now with cj anderson being a resurgent uh with cj anderson in the backfield broncos are gonna keep rolling like they do in, in listen Buffalo. i'm a believer i put i picked him up and starting him in one of my fantasy leagues so did I. Look, what's so helping cj anderson is that they actually addressed that offensive line in the offseason and they drafted bowls i mean he may not be able to play today but they at least took the steps so you're gonna see a better cj anderson as far as look LaShawn mccoy had nine yards last week on 12 carries so it's not like he lit up the world either and with denver's defense Look, Jordan Matthews and a rookie Jones are the Buffalo's wide receivers. Right. With that secondary Not from Denver, get it done. Akeem Tlaib, Chris Harris Jr. Are, are, oh, it's Miller? a wrap. Yeah, 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 yeah. A wrap. I mean, look, look this, this is legitimately going to be a joke. This might be a beatdown game. Trevor yeah. Simeon put up three touchdowns in the first half against Dallas last week. Will he do that again today against Buffalo's defense? Yes. I mean, I, th I, 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 I see a, three touchdown passes in a game, not three in the first half. I'm saying I three see, in the first yeah. half. I'll see a couple from C.J. Anderson, maybe one or two from, from Trevor. So, okay. so I see a couple from Trevor, to be I, honest with you. I mean, I, after, after the beating Dallas, I think Denver's the real deal. I mean, well, let, let's not make Dallas' defense out to be like, you know, the purple people eaters or something that's, you, you know, curtain. like super great. Right. I mean, their defense is pretty bad. I mean, it, it wasn't that good last year. Um, that being said, I mean, Buffalo's defense is okay. Shaq Lawson is hurt. Marcel Darius may not even play. Gotcha. I mean, this, this is going to be ugly. All right. So, again, I'm, I'm assuming that across the board, unless, Dwayne, you're going to change on us this week, are you going with Denver? I'm asking Dwayne first. Dwayne, Denver or Buffalo? Like I said, man, I'm riding the Denver train. It's, okay. And, and I'm not, I just, I'm not I, deviating I wanted from to that. make sure before because you done switched on us twice. I mean, I agreed with you on one. Twice but today or wh yes. when? 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 The first two picks. What do you mean the first two picks? You took, he had you the, took the Browns. And you're taking the Jets. It, that is vodka, oh, no, isn't you're, you're it? Just talking, he's, I think he means going against the grain. Yes. Okay, But gotcha. you didn't actually scribble out your picks. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. no, you yeah. didn't scribble. And well, look, it, I'm, I'm, all about, I'm all about going against the grain, man. That's, that's what I yes, do. Yes, we all know right. that. If, that's what I try to do. If right. Trevor to Simeon becomes even a legitimate, Wait, decent Let me see what you're seeing through these glasses right here, Dwayne. Everybody should be afraid. Yeah, no wonder why you picked them. He's their Achilles heel. He's been their biggest weakness. Now they fix the O-line. They have a defense that can do – look. Not every defense can do that to Dallas. He's managing the game well. He's he's you know he's also that being he a is. mobile quarterback as it is behind the pocket when he's getting rushed out. So he he is the leader of that team now, and it's it's pretty much on his shoulders. Well, he's smart. He went to Northwestern. Yeah. I mean, okay, he, so he has to be. across the board, we all have Denver winning this game against Buffalo. Yes? yes, 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 yes. All right, let's do one more before we go to break, and that is a divisional game. New Orleans heading to Carolina, divisional matchup between the Saints and the Panthers. Over the last five games, you know, these games have been decided by five points or less. So the over-under right now is 46-and-a-half. What do we think about that for today? Dwayne, I'm going to start with you. Well, I think that's, uh, that's a little high. I mean, you have a Cam Newton that's banged up. I'm just waiting for Cam Newton just to go down. I mean, every week he's just getting sacked left and right. He's getting banged up pretty good. You have a Greg Olson that's pretty – he's gone. 
he tight ends gone. He, usually he's good for a good touchdown a game. So, I mean, I think that's a little high. I still see Carolina just eking it out because uh, New Orleans doesn't have a defense. But um, I say it goes the under. All right. Frank, let me ask you. The Saints are 0-2. Yes. Are they back to being the Aints? Well, look, we, we know what New Orleans is. I mean, I don't think anybody's surprised. If you look, they have the same exact record the last three years in a row. They've been 7-9. and nine. That's what they are. Drew Brees is going to throw for 5,000 yards. So if he's your fantasy quarterback, I mean, that's basically all he's good for. Their defense has been terrible. It, they were, they're already Two games in, they're already last in total defense in the NFL. I mean, it didn't take them any time to get to the bottom. I mean, which I get they're comfortable there. But Lattimore's not going to play. I mean, Carolina, now their offense hasn't really looked great. They, they've had some rhythm problems and everything, but – What's the best cure for a bad offense? Saints defense. Exactly. Okay, so flipping to that, Great L. Bushman, let me ask you, how surprised are you that Carolina is actually 2-0 and in your division? I'm not surprised at all. I mean, what we saw last year was kind of a hiccup in their season. I mean, they, they it's, it's back and forth. Every other year, the, the, the Carolina Panthers are either good or bad. So coming into this season, no. I'm not, I'm not you know, surprised they're 2-0, and but going into this game, they do, do, they do need a shot in the arm offensive wise. Greg Olson is out for, I think, the rest of the season pretty much with a broken foot. He's out at least six to eight weeks. So said, yeah. I, I want to see more of, of White Lightning, Christian McCaffrey. You drafted this guy for a reason. Now put him in, put him in front and center in that offense. You also have Kel, Kelvin Benjamin, who's who's had an, another resurgent year because of last year's kind of problem. So if, if, you ha- if you can protect Cam Newton, which the O-line is still not doing – they're going to have a – I think it's going to be a shootout with this game anyways. You but say it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a shootout. Both, both pl- defenses are, are kind of terrible right now. And you know, we know what the Saints do. All they do is throw. All right. I mean, AP should get out of there right K- – Carolina's been taking the ball away a lot, though. I mean, I That's know it's only true. been two games, but – I see know. more of the same because all they, do is, all they do is pass. Okay. Craig, speak to me today about the impact that you're going to see potentially from Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is an awesome receiver. The problem is he's going up against the Carolina defense with the Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley at linebacker position, so he's going to have to beat that secondary coverage uh, over the top to get a lot of his like underneath catches that he normally does. But listen, they're, they're going to be behind again, and, Drew, and like Frank said, Drew Brees is going to throw for a lot of yards. He's going to do well in fantasy. This is actually going to be a high-scoring game, so I think the yep. 46 and a half, it's going to go over that, Dwayne. I know I, you said I, that I you think thought it was going to well, go yeah. under. It's, um, I see a big game from Christian McCaffrey today because last week the Patriots had a lot of success using the running game, uh, running backs out of the backfield catching passes, James White and those type of people. You know, and, and Christian McCaffrey can do that. He showed in the preseason he can do that. He has, and it's time to set him loose, okay? He has yet to score. You had, the, rain, you had score. the reins on the first two weeks. Now no Greg Olson. You have to start featuring him in the offense but a little he, bit more. Here's, uh, here's what's going to hurt Christian McCaffrey, and I said this before. If Christian McCaffrey played for the Saints under Sean Payton, he would be. you would see way better numbers out of him. My oh, yeah. Shula, come on. You, you, you know Mike Shula from the old Buck days. I mean, offensive creativity. I mean, he's looking All at Christian low. McCaffrey like. It's vanilla. <laughs> well, I know it can do things, but I don't really know what to do with it. He's like scared to call plays for him. All right, yeah, so, that, yeah. gentlemen, who do we have in this game, Saints or Panthers? Great L. Bushman? I've got Panthers. Panthers. Craig? Panthers. Dwayne? Panthers. Frank? Panthers. Across the board, unanimous. It is the Carolina Panthers. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, we are going to break down more of these games. We are here at Old School HNL 3. Be right back. And welcome back to HNL 3 here at Old School, 1991 Main Street, beautiful downtown Sarasota. We are all in the building. All right, gentlemen, let's keep the show going here. Let's talk about another game. Let's talk about some more meaningful games for us, I guess you should say. So let's start with Frank. Your yes. Pittsburgh Steelers at 2-0. and Yep. Heading to face Mike Glennon, Tariq Cohen, and the Chicago Bears. <laughs> That's exciting. The Bears are 0-2 very simply. Is it time for them to start Trubisky? It was, it was time for them to start Trubisky before the season even started. I agree. I mean, I mean if he can't beat out Mike Glennon, then... He's no good. I mean, you, you wait. You wasted your draft pick. Let's see. What and forty five million dollars. Well, that's that's a one year deal. He, he's not going to see that money. They got him for one year, fifteen million dollars, and he's going to be gone. You know, and I said this Thursday. I think you you have a great chance of seeing Trubisky in this game. I don't see Glennon lasting at all. Um, Chicago's going downhill. They may very well go zero and three this game. Look, Jordan Howard has not been, you know, 59 yards so far on the season. They get Kyle Long back today. That's going to help the offensive line a little bit. But, I mean, look, Kyle Long is not Jesus, and that's pretty much what they need to win this game. Uh, 
the thing that concerns me is more on Pittsburgh's side of the ball. And it's, it's not even the defense. No touchdowns for Antonio Brown. Le'Veon Bell, it's like, eh, you can't even say the killer Bs. I mean, it's pretty much been like one B. So, but that defense, though, T.J. Watt, he's got some sacks, some interceptions. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to like it. I have I'm, a big grin on your face I, right I, now. I, I do. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not the steel curtain, but it's not the shower curtain either. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like in, in between, like maybe a hard like plastic. A, like a screen something. door almost? Yes. Yeah, like some, a screen some, door. Okay. So, something that's, that you could knock on a little bit. Okay, okay but let me it. say this to you gentlemen. Look at this. And I know sometimes we don't look at trends, or maybe we do. The Bears at home against the Steelers are 11 and 1. What, back in the 1940s? No, I mean, overall. Overall, actually, they're 18, 7, and 1. So Listen, this I'm, team is I'm terrible. saying to you. The Chicago Bears team's awful. I, Mike, I agree Mike with Land you. needs to be benched. They have no weapons on offense, absolutely no wide receivers. You know, if, if Bellamy's your, your biggest go to at wide receiver, you're going to lose the game. Yeah, you Pittsburgh have has a high powered offense. They can score 20 points and still win this game because the Bears can't even score 20. Pittsburgh okay. wins this easily. Okay, so yeah. Big Ben week one threw a 50 yarder to Antonio Brown. Week two, 50 yarder to Martavius Bryant. Who gets the 50 yarder today? Martavius Bryant. I hope so. I need that. Only because but. he's on my fantasy team. Yeah. <laughs> so he can have Look, that. If, if you have anybody for the Steelers offense on your fantasy, Play him. You're good to go for I mean, today. T- Bryant, Brown, I mean, Le'Veon Bell even. What about I mean, Jesse James? Hey, I, that's the best tight end in there. That, that's, that, that's the best tight end name in football as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, He's the Jim Bob Cooter okay. of tight ends. So, Mike Glennon, speaking of him, three turnovers last week, two interceptions and a fumble. How about over-under on today's production or lack thereof, shall we say? What do we expect from him today? What do you I, mean? would, I would say more the same like last week against the, the – the Bucks D fire the cannons, by the what way. What was the over-under on this game? Hey, he's talking about turnovers. I'm talking about Mike oh, okay. Lennon on his turnovers. Okay. I think the gotcha, Bears gotcha. are going to try and play it safe as best they can to, to limit those interceptions because, to, to, to Glennon's credit, he doesn't really have much to work with when it comes to wide no, receivers. I, I, I'm not blaming it all on okay. Mike Glennon, but I still don't think he's good. No, he's he's a he's a backup. He's he's a career backup, and we, and we all know that. But I think the Bears, which they are a terrible team right now, is they're going to play as safe as possible. They're going to try and keep it on the ground because they're going to try and limit those interceptions and turnovers like they did against the Bucks, against the screen door of a defense for the Pittsburgh Steelers because they're coming up on the, on the defensive side. Craig, do we have an update on the uh, Ravens-Jags game? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it's 44 nothing. We can't worse. see it here because it's streaming on Yahoo. That's great marketing for the commissioner. Let's have a game overseas that we can't even see over here. So, pretty kudos much. Kudos to him again. It, it, he can teach you such a great job. He, only... So, Pretty don't try to save deal. face. He tried to save face coming out with the statement he made about uh, a player's kneeling. But we all know, like, let's not try to save face. He's done a terrible job, and he continues to do a terrible job. Only concern about today's game is that once in a while, Pittsburgh, they do go up against a team that they have no business losing to. Trying to be laxative. And, and that's why it. I said to you, and, and so it is, but, and are you, but, are you but, picking but, the Bears? At home, no, 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 are you no, picking but, the Bears? Yeah. The Steelers. But in defense, that was like the Miami Dolphins, so you could blame that on South Beach and partying <laughs> and Philly cheese It's Chicago, and though. Cheese. They got deep dish pizza. They got the Willis Tower. They got the signature room. I mean, come on now. I don't St- care what happens. Steelers win. Chicago's not winning this game. All right, so I got Steelers, Steelers, Steelers. Steelers. Steelers, it's unanimous. Yes, I have the Steelers. You can come check my sheet it if you want to. I thought he was leaning towards the, to the Bears. Oh, he was talking listen, them up so much. I'm like, why are we listen, still talking about this It's game all right, right here. I'm just letting you know. It's all right here. All right, Mr. Lindo. Why twice a year I have to see you and play against you? I have no idea, but. Hold on a second. Before we do this game, are you guys going to bet anything? Who, me and Dwayne? We should. Yeah. We should. We should. Listen, Dwayne, me, right, me and Craig uh, did for the Bucks, Dwayne, Bucks or, Patriots you know, game. You guys I, should listen, bet. but Dwayne and I play each other twice, twice a year. year. So, so if point? we split, then nobody wins. go double or nothing. Okay. So then, then put that in the in, in the clause. Yeah. Then Dwayne and I will. Yes, you're not going to have that problem this year. I, I don't think so. <laughs> we haven't had it the past couple of years, except for last year when we actually split with them. But more importantly, Dwayne, can you talk to me about your New York Giants, please? Because you're zero and two now. Listen. You're a team that's gone 0-2 in the past, <laughs> still made the postseason. Good timing, Chris. Had a, had a good run. Oh, look who walked in the door, Mr. Shane right. Case himself, talking about his Giants. <laughs> At least we got some Giants fans in here now, which is great. I got Eagles fans around outside with the dog, please. <laughs> I ain't worried about y'all. So, Dwayne, 
Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Rain, Giants, let's go. 0-2. What do you do today? Look, I What mean, do you do? We talked about this Thursday. We've yep. gone 0-2 and made it to the postseason, yep. as you said. 0-3 is going to be an issue. Um, this is a game, obviously, we can't Hold lose. Hold on, an issue? It's a concern. Well, no. Not it's, an issue. It's no, a concern. pressing the panic well, button, Dwayne. That's what we need no, to know No, I mean, today. here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, you have a, a Ben McAdoo that's thrown Eli under the bus. I thought that was wrong right off the bat. You really but, feel what he said was throwing Eli under the bus? Well, look, Eli threw himself underneath the bus. No, but again, as coach, as head coach. That mouth-breathing as idiot. Head coach, you oh, need to have, have football something. players become sensitive sallies like everyone? I don't care. It doesn't matter. As head Should coach, we give him a, a participation to, to trophy, too? As head coach. That's uh, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway... With that being said, Eli did do a bang-up job. I mean, he has issues. Yeah, he got banged up. The offensive line has issues. Flowers, offensive lineman, he has issues. Your running no running back games. Has issues. No running game. There's issues with the running game. So Giants have a slew of issues they need to rectify. And if that is not done, we might very well go 0-3. Okay, to be well, honest let me, let me just ask you this question. You talk so much about the offense. You talk so much about the defense. Why does your special teams just flat out blow it in either key crucial moments or just for teams putting the nail in the coffin? Because who's the guy for the Lions? He put a uh, 88-yard punt return. Oh, Agnew? I mean, he just y'all just let him run Eric, to the house. You know they have I mean, the issues with special disarray. teams. We Remember know that. The, the Deshaun Jackson well, game? that's what it's I'm issues. saying to you. Yeah. New York issues is the new team. Are they well, the, or issues? Look, it's here, issues. here's the thing, Eric. The team is in disarray. Ben McAdoo needs to do something as head coach. I what? mean, he's the leader of this team. What? You need not to throw folks under the bus. His what? players under the bus. What does he need to do? Well, Dude, he has he has to he has to know what to do because I don't know what to do for the Giants at this point. How about you start with putting a second tight end on the offensive line because your offensive line can't block us. I mean, let's be honest. You you can put only so much. Brandon Marshall, I said it Thursday. He's a bum. I mean, he's stealing money. He, he's, he's done. I mean, he, he's there for a paycheck, and this will probably be his last year in the league. I mean, this game, and it, it's going to be – what are the strengths of your Eagles right now? Wait, wait, My strengths? Everything, pretty much right that, now. That D-line. Alshon Jeffrey, Eagles Fletcher, said what the strengths Fletcher are. Corey Smith. Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham. I mean, and you got Curry, an O-line that can't block Jerrigan. anybody. Yeah, I mean – your team is so bad, Dwayne. This is the first time ever I'm starting an Eagles quarterback in fantasy. <laughs> Thank you. That's how bad your team is. Well, look, I'd have to agree. I mean, the Giants are at this point I'm pretty bad. Um, Do you pick against what, the team? What are you looking at? You're looking at the, this, this sheet right <laughs> here. So we're looking at. I mean, it's pretty bad. I'm at I mean, how I'm going to catch up to you after one week. <laughs> we talked about Brandon Marshall uh, not being as good as he should be. Right. Uh, maybe he is on the decline, but I think a big part of it is that Brandon Marshall and Eli Manning, this is their first year playing together. They still need to get the kinks. Hold no on. Excuse. This is the first no, year of Carson Wentz playing with both Alshon Jeffries no and Torrey Smith, so there's no, no excuse. Well, no excuse. Yeah, These I are mean, veteran wide receivers here. This wasn't like you're bringing rookie wide receivers in here. Well, you know, look, if this I was, mean, if this was Sterling Shepard or from when he was a rookie or other rookie wide receivers coming in, a la like a John Ross or somebody, then maybe I could say, okay, you have – some you have some substance issues. there. You and look, and issues. I agree. You know, I agree with Frank that Brandon Marshall is on the decline. But I think that's only part of the. That's only part of it. I think the continuity between both those both these guys, Manning and Brandon Marshall, is an issue as well. How well, active? Part of it. How active, Craig? Are we going to see? OBJ today. Well, they need to. He played last week, and he, obviously he was limited. But they need to just unleash him. If if he's healthy enough to suit up, he's healthy enough to play the whole game. In my okay. opinion, all don't, right. Don't use him in spots. Use him as a decoy. And there that he offense is. needs OBJ to run. I'm so sorry. You know what I'm saying? And and, who, and what's the answer, Dwayne? Is it Orleans Darkwa? Yeah, I mean, Orleans. What's the answer well, running okay. back. <laughs> but here's well, the thing. There is no one. Really I mean, Paul Perkins. Bad? I mean, Paul Perkins. He's averaging one yards, but point, if you like six yards. Okay, but Craig, carry. if you watch the tape from that game. When Paul Perkins had the ball or Shane Vereen had the ball, that offensive line kind of collapsed. When Darkwall had the ball, that offensive line actually tried to protect him. So what, but what does that mean? He's not he the got answer, him early though. Christmas present? All these I'm not saying not he's answer. the answer, but what I'm saying is maybe there's something there between Darkwall and the offensive line to where maybe they need to run him a little more. I mean, listen, if you suited up for him, you'd be better suited than what they had. Well, in thank there. you. I appreciate that. I, I tried to, you know. Even, them, even, All right, even so those 50 year old knees. Who do we have winning this game across the board? Gentlemen, Great L. Bushman? Fly, Eagles, fly. Craig? I hate picking them, but I had to go Eagles. Dwayne? I'd say the Giants, man. Frank? How bad are your backups <laughs> that these are your starters? I, 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 I got the Eagles. 
if you have to ask, then you don't know my show, which is HNL3. We're moving on, people. Next up, Craig. Actually, no, before I get to you, where is he? Our one true fan is in the back. Steve, we've got two undefeated teams going up against each other today, the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. Now, I know I have been on the bandwagon of just trashing the Lions because I feel like they haven't produced, but, I mean, they're 2-0 and right now. They're 2-0. and You got lucky last year, Steve. <laughs> They're 2-0, and and they're going up against the Atlanta Falcons, who we know they always start off hot. Sometimes they go to the Super Bowl, and sometimes they go in the toilet. So, Great L. Bushman, let me ask you first. What do you expect to see today against your rival, the Atlanta Falcons, facing the Lions? I want to see Matthew Stafford turn it loose like he's been doing all season. He got that big money contract. Uh, I think he's he's there to earn his money, and he's, so far he's been doing pretty well. So uh, hopefully the, the Lions can, can withstand that high-powered offense, which I can't believe Kristen said they didn't have a high-powered offense, but hopefully the Lions defense can contain the high-powered offense of the Atlanta Falcons today. Um, I do have the Lions winning this game. It's, this one's actually going to be a low-scoring game between these two teams, I, I believe. Low-scoring. All right, Craig, the loss of Vic Beasley Jr., what does that do for this Falcons defense? I mean, they have a good defense overall. That definitely, you know, it puts a little kink in it. I like the Lions today as well. I thought I was going to be the only one up here that was picking the Lions. But I looked at Dwayne's sheet. He hasn't scribbled it out yet, but he has the Lions, <laughs> and you just picked the Lions. Yeah, since you guys picked I, it, I might have to go with Atlanta. Congrats, exactly. to, congrats to Chip no, I, Caldwell, who did get a five-year extension for his uh, his coaching duty. Yeah, I like what Matthew Stafford's doing. I Actually, I, I'm going to go against the grain on you. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think both these offenses are going to score. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Um, I like what the Lions are doing on offense. I see fresh legs from Theo Riddick and Amir Abdullah. They both look good. I don't know if it was like those color rush jerseys or whatnot, but, I mean, they look fast. The whole offense looks fast. Of course, they're going to have to be fast to score with Atlanta, but I like the Lions today, and I think uh, I think they get the ball to, to Galladay again and get him up and running as Frank, that third wideout over there along with Marvin Jones and Golden Tate. Frank, thus far, yep. Atlanta has played mistake-free football. Yeah. Now, I know they lost Vic Beasley. Does that change today against Detroit? No, I, I agree. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I mean, look, Detroit's defense, it does look better than it did last year. They're 19th right now against the run. Guess what? Atlanta can run the ball. I mean, if, if you want a measuring stick for how good your offense, for how good your defense is, Atlanta's offense is going to let you know at the end of the day where you stand, basically. Schrader, the right tackle for Atlanta, is out. He's one of the best in the league, so, you know, that could be a, a matchup problem, but... I got Atlanta. I, I mean, look, that 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 that, that, that offense. And look, I, I love me some Ziggy Ansah and Chris Slay Jr. But Julio Jones. I mean, that Atlanta offense. Steve Sarkeesian. Look, I know it's only two games. It's a small sample size, but you know, maybe a sober Steve Sarkeesian. You know, it, it looks like it's working. They also have to worry about Sanu and also Gabriel Jew in that offense Dwayne. as well. So, Dwayne, being the betting man that you are, I have to ask the question. Do you take the line on this game between the Falcons and the Lions? Well, look, I mean, these are – and I have to agree with, with Craig and Frank here that this may be a high-scoring game because you have two coaches, uh, two quarterbacks that know that they're going to have to put points on the board to win this game. Both offenses are going to be just off the chain. Um, how about that Ziggy Ansah, though? You you just mentioned him, played against the Giants. I mean, this guy's just a freak. Um I, again, I'm going to have to go with Detroit in this. Um, Detroit, I think, uh, t- uh, 2-0. Obviously, Atlanta 2-0 as well. Obviously, I love, you know, you're, t- you're saying that, you know, being the betting man that I am, I think home field advantage is a key here. And okay. for Detroit, their home, they, they, go, uh, they go off the board here and beat the Atlanta Falcons. Stafford's been sacked four times already. And that Atlanta defense, it's young, but it's fast. I mean, he quit. Quinn is building it like that Seattle defense and speed kill, so it's, it, it'll be interesting. Frank, it is very rare that I go against you, but I, I cannot argue the fact that the Lions are, are trying, to, trying to turn around the stink that they left from last year. So, and you know how I feel about Matt Ryan. Even though he is he – is You a, hate him? I, he, no, I don't hate him. I hate – Don't say he's regressing either. I didn't say he's he was not. regressing. What I'm saying is if we look at both these quarterbacks – for my money, I'm gonna put my money on Stafford today, and well, I think so did Stafford. The Lions. Yes, they put a lot of money on. They him. put a lot of money. They put 135 million reasons why, but I'm going with the Lions today as well. Me too. All right, we know Steve. <laughs> That's kind of a Matt guy. Ryan and Matthew Stafford uh, both uh, pick up basketball game teammates. 
<laughs> <laughs> All right. Craig, that's, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go here. That's a possibility there. I, I, Talking about your New England Patriots, the Houston Texans are coming to town with Deshaun Watson. Brady's got an amazing record against rookie quarterbacks. So what do we expect today from New England playing against the Texans? I expect to see similar to what I saw last week. Obviously, the Texans' defense is a lot better than the Saints were last week. They're going to get to Brady, but he's had success against Houston in that exact same defense in the past, and I just don't think Houston has enough weapons on offense to score with them. So I'm, I'm seeing something about like a 27 to 17 or 27 10 game. All I don't right. think Deshaun Watson, um, outside of uh, DeAndre Hopkins, has enough weapons on an offense to score. Great L. Bushman, does Brady pass for over 400 yards today? Uh, no, I don't think he goes that high. I think he, he goes go about maybe 250, 300. All right. Sorry, Craig. Frank, Patriots have not had a giveaway in five straight regular season, day, in five straight regular season games. J.J. Watt to Davion Clowney. Do they actually end that streak today? Look, I, I think Houston, it's not like they did get blown out in that playoff game last year, but let's be honest, if Brock Osweiler wasn't their quarterback, they didn't lose that game because of their defense. They can put pressure on Brady, and their secondary, Boye being gone, letting him go. Brandon Cooks, I think, has his breakout game today because of that. Um, he needs it. Yeah, well, and I, I think, look, at some point, Foreman is going to replace Miller as the running back there in Houston. I mean, I, I, I would go ahead and just do that now, basically, but Houston's only chance to win this game is that defense and putting pressure on Tom Brady. And I, is your, I believe your right tackle is not playing. Questionable. Game time decision there, yeah. All right, so then I asked the question, Dwayne, Patriots, Texans, who do you have? I got Patriots. I think the Patriots just have too much in the tank offensively. I don't think Brady will throw for 400 yards, but they're going to get the job done against Houston. Great L. Bushman, who you got? Pats all the way. Is that because your mom and dad are here? No, it's just the Pats are a better team than the Texans. Right okay. Now. Frank? Patriots. Cross the board. I'm not even asking you, Craig. I already know. <laughs> Cross the board, it is the Patriots. So let's go now, Great L. Bushman, to your game in Minnesota. Fire the cannons. Fire the cannons. There you go. Fire them cannons. So, Bucks offense versus the Vikings defense. Who wins? Bucks offense. Why? Too many weapons, man. Too many, too many weapons. The only concern I have is the run game. Last week they didn't run so well against the Chicago Bears, but with, with Mike Evans, and I, I want to see a little bit more out of uh, Deshaun Jackson and with O.J. Howard and also Cameron Bray in the back end. Um, I, I want to see what I saw last week against Chicago. It's going to be a tougher tougher play against the Minnesota Purple People Eaters. Um, one thing I, I want to see Jameis do is to be more accurate on the deep, the deep balls. Throwing to, to Mike and also the D, to G Jax, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a good matchup. I, I, this 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 matchup between these two teams is gonna be good. All right, flipping that side, Craig. I'm gonna go to you and say, even though it is Case Keenum, they still have Stephon Diggs, they still have Latavius Murray, they still have Adam Thielen, they still have Dalvin Cook. Can the Minnesota offense? be successful today against the Bucks defense they can they just have to establish a run early and kind of lean on Dalvin Cook I think that he's played really really well this season the problem I mean I would pick the Vikings normally if Sam Bradford's playing the fact that he's not I just don't have any faith in Case Keenum to get that he offense moving and, and and playing the type of football that needs to be played in order to beat the Bucks. the Bucks are in a tough spot it's a tough defense a really tough defense the, the Bucks are also without Quan Alexander today and Chris Baker too so it's 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 gonna be I tough I expect it to be a three-point game honestly I think it's gonna be a lot closer than people think but I'm going with the Bucks in this situation. Fire the cannons. Fire the cannons. Look, that, that means a big day for Dalvin Cook. No yep. Quan Alexander. I mean, he's the guy that could have maybe kept him in check. Expect a big day from Dalvin Cook. Sadly, uh, Chris Baker, you said Smith is not playing either. Yeah, he's well. out too as well. I mean, th those are concerns. And Minnesota's defense, nine trips to the red zone for teams, two touchdowns. I need that today. I need and Minnesota's D to step up, even though I have Mike Evans. And my fantasy as well. I got Mike Evans, and then I've got Minnesota's D. It's, so. it's something that Jameis has to – he's going up against a good defense. And when he goes up against d good defense, he, he makes those stupid mistakes. So he has to limit himself about when he's getting scrambled out of the pocket and he's going to be going down for a sack, just take the ball with you. Don't throw it in the middle of the field like he's like he's, like we've seen him done before. So that that's play conservative football, but just turn it loose when you can. Case Keenum is 2-0 and against the Bucks yeah, the last two years. Is. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I really don't think that means anything in this game. I mean, uh, Dalvin Cook really offensively for Minnesota. Really, that's the only weapon that Minnesota has offensively. Latavius Murray, not a non-factor. Wait, wait, you're Case saying Keenum, Cook is the only weapon Minnesota has? They've got Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. Oh Thielen's? yeah, Stephon Diggs and Kyle Rudolph. Oh, that's about on, it. Man. Stephon Diggs and Dalvin Cook, and really, 
I, but I, the thing is, I don't have any faith in Case Keenum. If to the do anything. if the Bucks can contain Cook, then then they're going to have to rely on Case Keenum to throw the ball, and that's something that's something that the Vikings want to avoid. So the Bucks have to contain that run game. Have to. All right. So then, let me ask you, gentlemen, this simple question: If the Bucks can get out to a hot start, let's say they put up fourteen right off the gate, what does Case Keenum? And more importantly, what does the weapons that we spoke of, Delvin Cook, Stefan Diggs, Adam Thielen, are they going to be able to come back from this? Because what I've seen is, you know, and this goes for any team, but I think more so for Minnesota, if they don't start out hot, I feel like they just kind of let their foot off the gas and kind of just give up and just let the other team just roll over them. Case Keenum, like you said, Frank, 2-0 and against the Bucks. Could we actually see him go 3-0 and today? And if so, what do you think is going to be the key, like, crucial takeaway from it? When your hopes for winning a game involve saying Case Keenum, you, I mean, it, it, has it come to this? I mean, the, 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 this is what we're looking at for Minnesota. I mean, look, I'm picking the Bucks to win. I, I think Minnesota, I, I love that defense. If Minnesota had any kind of an offense to come to the table and help them, they're, they're a serious threat and contender, but I think the Bucks defense, even with the people, the injuries and the people not playing, I think that offense is good enough, and I'm hoping, you know, we got kind of a Florida State reunion going there. Xavier Rhodes, yep. Cook, Jameis Winston. I mean, you, you know, I, I got the Bucks winning on the road. What's the score? 27-20. 27-20. Dwayne, who do you got winning this game? Uh, Bucks, 23-17. 23-17. Craig? 20-17. Bucks? Bucks. Just give me a you score. You even have to ask me? Come well, on, just man. give me a score. 20, I know. 24 17. I know Bucks. who you're picking. I know. All you gentlemen are staying in the 20s. No one's saying this is going to be a, a blowout. No, or, it's not going to be a blowout. No, no, no. no. Or it's what? not going to be low scoring. You're keeping it right in the middle. I'm actually very surprised. I'll well, go 17 10. Go ahead. No, just a quick question. Just like Eric, you pick the Bucks every game. Doesn't matter who they're playing, right? Just, yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Why would I go against my team? Well, no. I mean, if yeah, you, we're, we're not like you, Dwayne, who, you know, even though your team is still in the toilet, you still will pick against them. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, no, picking, I, I'm no. picking the team I think is going to win, but that's just me. Okay. Anyhow, anyway, I've got, I've got a 17-10 score, and I'm saying that the Bucks are going to win. So unanimous it is that. All right. Let's take another break. When we come back, we got a couple more games to get into. You are listening to us, HNL3. We are here at Old School. We'll be right back. And welcome back to HNL3 here. We are live at Old School, 1991 Main Street, beautiful downtown Sarasota. Make sure you're taking care of your bartenders. Danielle's behind the bar. I see my man David, a.k.a. Luda, behind there as well. We got a decent crowd going on down here. Make sure you, we are here every Sunday from 1130 till the start of the games. HNL3, don't forget, we are doing our 50-50 raffle. Proceeds are going to the Boys and Girls Club of Sarasota. Gentlemen, let's keep the show going here. We got a couple games left to get to. Let's go to Seattle on the road today to face the Tennessee Titans. Seattle are 6 and 1 against the Titans. The game has been decided. These games have been decided by 7 points or less. Seattle now, you know, they're known for holding teams to single digits. Dwayne, do you think they'll be able to do that today against the Titans? Seattle has fallen on hard times here. I mean, uh, Russell Wilson, uh, look, the line for Seattle, I think, is an issue. Russell Wilson has not been able to get the job done over there. Uh, defense uh, struggling a little bit, too. Um, I don't know. I just don't see Seattle winning this game. I have Tennessee. Even though Seattle, you said you just spotted off a stat, Seattle is 6-1 and one against the Titans. Um, but I don't, I don't see it happening today. Titans at home, Titans win. All right. Frank, let me ask you. Yep. Titans put up 31 just in the second half alone against their divisional opponent, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Will they be able to do that again today should it call for it 
against Seattle. Look, Se- Seattle's defense and Jacksonville's defense should never be mentioned in the same sentence. I agree. So let, let, let's get that. Seattle's defense is going to be staring at Tennessee's offensive line all day today like, wow, if only we had that. The, they have first-rounders. They have a real offensive line. Corey Davis is not going to play for Tennessee, but Delaney Walker, look, Seattle's defense hasn't gone anywhere. They're not losing because of that. They have no offensive line. DeMarco Murray, questionable. Heavy dose of Derrick Henry. That, that's going to be the game plan for Tennessee. You might, even see, you might even see Delaney Walker out of the, back, the backfield like they did last week, too. Absolutely. That was yeah. kind of a tricky yeah. move. I liked that last week. All right. Speaking of Derrick Henry, Craig, how big of a day can we predict him to have if DeMarco Murray is able to go or not? I think he has a pretty big day. I mean, C- Seattle's defense has been – they've been up to par, but they've called the offense out. The problem is, is oh, that yeah. they're going to be on the field a lot because the offense can't get moving. Yeah. Tennessee's defense is, is underrated in the league, and I, I think them being at home, they're going to win this game. I have Tennessee win this game, I, I, which is going to put Seattle in a tough spot, but I, I think Derrick Henry can have a pretty good game uh, if DeMarco Murray – and even maybe if DeMarco Murray does play. I think Tennessee wins the game, and Seattle has their running back. Chris Carson – I, I, I very think good. That, yeah, that, very good fantasy have, pickup, too. They have them, but are they going to utilize them? Or, well, he, or are they going to put Rawls in? He's averaging 5.1 yards a carry. Put, I mean, he, he got 95 last week. So, I mean, if they're smart, which I don't think they are because, no. I mean. Because they, they didn't run Marshawn Lynch on the one. Well, well yeah. that Well, <laughs> well that, but look, they've not drafted offensive linemen. It's like, come on, you you got a quarterback that's mobile, but he can only do so much. He can only run so much. There's one word that describes Seattle's offense right now is anemic. Anemic. That's a good word. Um, I, I got Tennessee winning at home again. You know, Tennessee's looking pretty good offensive wise, and Craig, like you said, they're underrated defense. Um, Derrick Henry's going to play a big role in their offense today. Uh, Demarco Murray is still dealing with that. I think it was a hamstring again, uh, like he did last year. So expect us to see a lot of him on the field today uh, with the loss of Corey Davis. Eric Decker's going to have to pick it up, and also Delaney Walker. But Titans win at home. I like the Titans in this I game. I got three right now for Tennessee. Dwayne, are you making it four? Oh yeah, it's Tennessee all the way. Like wow. I said. I thought I would be the only one picking this team because I really thought that with what I've seen the last two weeks, you know, I'm really impressed with the Dick LeBeau defense. And more importantly, Mariota, third year, has the weapon. So, all right, unanimous decision. We've all got the Titans. And Tennessee has a pass rush. I mean, Arakpo, Derek Morgan, they're, they're going to chase Russell a lot today. All right. So they started me- off slow last week against Jacksonville. In the second half, they just, just ran away with it. They just picked it up, which is what I was saying. All right, let's go on to the next game. Oh, God, why? I mean, I I don't even really have to ask this question, but I guess I'm going to anyhow. Green Bay. Green Bay. I'm going to say this again. Is there any possibility that you four gentlemen up here see in Green Bay losing to the fire Marvin Lewis, somebody please, and the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, if if Vontez Burfick, uh, they all pull out shivs and stab Aaron Rodgers in the neck. That's it. There's the no chance. The only team Aaron Rodgers does not beat is the Cincinnati Bengals. 0-2 against the Bengals, yes. The only team. The only team. That changes today. Go and Pack, in, go. Wait, wait, but in those two games, he got sacked a total of 10 times. So, Craig, how does he convert that today? Well, we've talked about this in the past. They did fire their offensive coordinator they a lot did. of times. Yeah, because teams he's the will, mistake. Well, a lot of times teams will rally. I expect them to get the ball to A.J. Green a lot today since he came out, soft-spoken as he is. He came out last week and said, listen, we need to get our playmakers the ball. It's a star-driven league and all that. I, I, still, I still don't think that they have enough to compete with Green Bay's offense. So I see Green Bay winning this game 27-20. Actually, 27-20. Craig, right, Frank, ahead. let me ask you. Since he right now is 0-2. Yeah. If they lose today, which it looks like people are saying that, don't give me your picks just yet. You said if. I said if. <laughs> I did. I have to ask this question. A large if. If Cincinnati goes 0-3, do you pull the trigger on Andy Dalton and bring in A.J. McCarron? No, they'll, they'll keep going with Andy Dalton because that's just you know the money that they're paying him. I mean, look, Cincinnati's got a lot of problems, and their defense is not one of them. I mean, it's actually been – somewhat respectable i mean dalton has the worst quarterback rating in the league pick a running back either go with mixon go with bernard go with hill quit run quit trying to run the smart move is to go with mixon bernard and hill ain't getting it done yeah john ross is out too so aj green is gonna have to be that main focus and also tyler eford i believe is out too as well he is all right 
So let me flip it and Dwayne ask you this question. Should the Packers go to one and two today? Okay? And the Lions are successful in beating the Falcons to go three and zero. Oh. Will the Packers make the postseason? I think both teams, I think both Detroit and Green Bay will make and one as a wild card, obviously. Um, I I see Detroit winning the division. Aaron, to be honest with you. As Aaron Rodgers would say, relax. Relax. Okay. Yeah, look, I he, just have to ask the question. Relax. He's not dating that girl anymore, so no more, Bunn? No, no, no more distractions. Yep. So. All right. Does anybody have, as Frank calls them, the Cincinnati Bungles winning this game? Anybody? No. Anybody? Bueller? Okay. <laughs> Packers across the board. Let's move on. Oh, I'm sorry. Our one true fan, Steve, in the back has Cincinnati winning this game. Well, we all know why. Can somebody please, I will say this until it happens, fire Marvin Lewis. That needs to happen. All right. Let's go to another divisional game here. Kansas City Chiefs heading into Los Angeles to play their divisional opponent, the Chargers. Can the Chargers stop the explosive attack of the Kansas City Chiefs with Alex Smith, Travis Kelsey, and the new guy who people are sleeping on in fantasy, but now has become one of the top picks in DraftKings, one of the more expensive guys, in Kareem Hunt. Don't forget about Tyreek Hill, too. And Tyreek Hill, as Kristen made me very aware of last week, two of the fastest running backs in the entire NFL right now. So, Craig, can the Chargers stop the explosive attack of the Chiefs? No. No. Easy Just answer, no. I mean, I think that I, it's, again, the Chargers are the same thing we've seen for the last five years. Same exact type of team. Nap time. They have a good offense. Their defense at times. But guess what? They're, get, they're out. Brett's out. You know, so the cornerback, their defense took a hit there. They're going to slow them down a bit. It's a division game. I expect it to be close for a while, but I just think the Chiefs are a better team. You know, they have weapons on offense, which they're going to keep They're going to keep getting momentum down the field, and I expect the Chiefs to, Chiefs to take this game. Frank, let's yep. talk about Chris Jones for a minute. This guy coming off a stellar game, three sacks, two forced fumbles, an interception, five solo tackles. Look, let's speak to him and what he's going to do today. Look, Kansas City hit gold right there. I mean, that, that that's really good. I mean – Kansas City has established themselves. I mean, their last 11 division wins, they're 11-0. and 0. I mean, they beat the Chargers the last six. And Phillip, even though the Chargers are 0-2, nobody's blowing them out. They lost their two games by a combined five points. I mean, All because of kicks. Exactly. Kicks. The, the kicker. I mean, the laces were out. But they've been in every game. So they, they have a chance to beat anybody. I just don't think that it's going to happen today. All right. So, Dwayne? You seem to be sometimes a man who likes to not side with the rest of the bunch, so I'm going to ask you. It's funny you Chiefs say that. Chiefs or Chargers, who do you have in today's game? Look, uh, the, the Chiefs are heavily favored, but I think L.A., you know, Frank just mentioned it. You know, these guys are 0-2, but they've lost by only a couple points each game. So I have to go with L.A. in this game, you know, just for the upset. L.A. Did, did they get a new kicker? Do, does who get a new kicker? Uh, San Diego. Did the Chargers uh, get L.A.? New well, no. No. No, he no, they're rolling with them. The they're first two with games them. against well, look, the grain. They're he's winning going this game. with the L.A. Chargers. Great L. Bushman, Craig, Frank. I assume you all have the Chiefs in this one. Dun, I, do. Dun, I love dun, L.A. You are the lone fan. That's this what one. they do. All right, get let's go to the it. Sunday night game, which is featuring the two and zero. Oakland Raiders. Let's get Carl up here. Carl, get up here. We need to borrow you he's for a minute, right my now. brother. Oh, he found my dad. <laughs> Two and zero, oh, Oakland Raiders. You are going into FedEx Field to face the Washington Redskins. Can I just say first and foremost, thank you for last week because what you guys did to the Jets, I won my fantasy week, so I was very happy. So thank you. I expect more of that today, by the way. I'll, I'll pay you later. But let's talk about this, gentlemen. You thought that when Latavius Murray went out and Marshawn Lynch came in, that beast mode may not be as effective as Who's, we thought. Who said that? There were people because he didn't who? play. I don't there think, anybody, were, I don't think said anybody said that on this show. <laughs> Look, there's there's that people up. that think the world is flat, too. Yeah, so, oh, that's right. I mean, yeah, that's right. So I, but I want to get your take on today because now a West Coast team traveling to the East Coast, it is Sunday Night Football. 
What do we expect today from Derek Carr, Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, and Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch? I mean, I got to tell you, the rapport that Derek Carr has with Michael Crabtree is phenomenal. I mean, three touchdowns last week. Uh, the connection's great. Obviously, and Amari Cooper is probably the more talented out of the two wide receivers. So, I mean, that offense is sky's the limit. I love what they're doing. Marshawn Lynch looks rejuvenated, and he doesn't even need to play a lot if they have the lead. So he's on the sideline dancing this against the Jets, though. Let's be honest. You know, the Redskins aren't what they were last year. They're still kind of trying to find themselves. I expect for the Raiders yeah. to win this game, and I expect them to win it pretty decently, about 10 or 13 points. The Redskins are, seem to be more of a road team again, uh, that, rather than a home team. So I, I completely agree with you. But, Carl, let me ask you. Last year, your team was on such just a progression, and then all of a sudden you kind of flatlined when Derek Carr went down. His health, this guy is back. He's got a huge chip on his shoulder. I know you're going to say sky's the limit, but realistically, what do you expect to see this team? How far do you expect to see them go? A little bit further than last year. Okay. Easy enough. You any fancy questions for us before we uh... – I do have one. This is horrible. I have DeMarco Murray, and I have Henry, and I have McCaffrey, and I've got Stewart. I've got those four backs. And I've got Start spots. Henry McCaffrey. Henry McCaffrey. Yeah. Henry McCaffrey. Definitely yeah, I mean, not Murray. DeMarco may not even play. Right. He, I'm, yeah. I'm he does, he's not yeah. going to be 100%. So, yeah, Derrick Henry's going to get the bulk of the carries there. And even if, I'm leaning the same way. Yeah, even if Murray was 100%, I think uh, the other half will take a lot of the carries. Derrick Henry. All right. And you so, handcuffed your running backs good, though, so yeah. if one of them gets injured, you're good to go. But if they don't, you kind of you got your hands tied every week. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. There we go. Gentlemen, go anybody Raiders. here with the Redskins, Dwayne? No. Nope. My, okay. My concern for the Raiders is the same thing I was concerned about them last year. Their defense. I, yeah. I mean, how's that going to hold up? Offensively, score with anybody, Marshawn Lynch. I like Khalil Mack, but beyond him. All right. All right. Let's talk about one more team, and that is the Monday night game. Dallas is actually rolling into Arizona. Simple question. If you're the Dallas Cowboys, how in the world do you get Ezekiel Elliott to actually play the damn game based on his performance last week that wasn't there, basically non-existent, against Denver? How do you, how do you fix that? Let him go to any of the pot shops there in Phoenix? I mean, honestly, I mean, listen, if they lose, I'm a happy man, so it doesn't bother me one bit, but this is the Dallas Cowboys, a team last year that went 13-3. and three. You know, what do we expect to see them do tomorrow night against Arizona? And mind you, Arizona is still without David Johnson. And that's, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, they didn't just lose a guy. They lost. And like, J.J. Nelson, guy, I yeah. believe, he's questionable. Yes, he when, is. When yeah. you have to re-sign Chris Johnson to your team to be your lead back, there is a problem. When Andre Ellington and Kerwin Williams can't do, do the job, you got to sign Chris Johnson. But, Remember Chris Johnson, who used yes, to be good? Yeah, Tennessee Titans. Look, but their defense, Arizona's defense, it's legitimate. And, look, people were saying that Denver had the blueprint to beat Dallas. They had the blueprint because they got Chris Harris Jr., Akeem Tlaib, and Vaughn Miller and Derek Wolf. I mean, not a lot of teams have that kind of a defense. So let, let's hold off on that. I do think Arizona wins the game, though, because Dallas's defense, it's not good. A lot of their players are still suspended that were starters. So, and Arizona has a defense that's it's not in the caliber of Denver. It's Denver-like. Their secondary can cover. Patrick Peterson is a freak. Tyrone Matthew, they can rush the passer. So, yeah, I got, I got Arizona winning. Dwayne, let me go ahead, Craig. I mean, I've seen nothing from Arizona this year. They almost lost to the Colts last year with Jacoby Brissett at the helm. Granted, their defense is pretty good, but their offense has been struggling mightily. John Brown's out again, I believe. You know, J.J. Nelson's banged up. Larry Fitzgerald's just old. He's just old at this point. You know, yeah. he's, still, he's still productive, but at the same time, what is this team even going to look like next year? Larry Fitzgerald's last year. Carson Palmer, he's right. done. Completely I mean, different. I, I like Dallas to yeah. bounce back in this game. I think Zeke Elliott gets on a run. Um, I expect him to have a big day, actually. You know, it's funny. I find uh, Arizona, they have to find a way to win. I mean, you just mentioned the ailing uh, uh, Arizona offense having some troubles, had troubles since the beginning of the season. But they have to find a way to win this game. I don't see Dallas. Um, uh, I, I see Dallas competing, but I see Arizona just edging them out, uh, being at home. Again, I'm, I'm, a home for the, I'm a homer for the home team. So 
Uh, I got to take Arizona in this game. All right, so I've got two for Arizona. Cowboys. Craig's got Dallas, two and two. Yeah. To all my Eagle fans out there, please don't hate me. But I am picking Dallas to bounce back. Oh, okay, so oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. So I'm picking Arizona. Yes. And you're picking Dallas. Yes. Wager. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The world's going to end. I, I know. Something's got to give because it's very rare that I even pick this team, let alone even say their name. But for this particular purpose, for this game, for this week, I am siding with that team down in Jerry World. You can't hide your passion and love. I hate them with a passion. Honest to God, I do. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for us here week three at Old School. We want to thank you guys for hanging out. We are going to be doing our 50-50 raffle. All the proceeds are going to the Boys and Girls Club. We're going to give out tickets throughout 5 for 5, 10 for 10, 20 for 20. We're going to do them at halftime. We'll see y'all next week.